Ganesh, uh, welcome to my show and uh, first of all hearty congratulations for uh, winning the Wildlife Photographer of the Year award. So for the folks who don't know, Ganesh is just back from London where he was a part of the uh, Natural uh, History Museum Wildlife Photographer of the Year event. Uh, he won the first place in the birds category and so Ganesh, how does it feel like because it's been a long wait. So what was your first reaction when you heard about the news? I felt uh, really happy. Uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, very nice to be there and uh, it was a great opportunity to meet uh, a lot of uh, the photographers all over the world. Uh, and uh, we had, we got an opportunity to interact with uh, uh, very well-known names in the, the wildlife uh, the photography. It was really nice and, and, and seeing the Natural History Museum was, was uh, really great. Okay. Uh, it is an amazing place to visit. Okay. I really liked it. Okay. So let's go to your particular image as such. So just tell us a little bit about your image because a lot of people have been seeing that image on social media. Mm -hmm. But you just tell us what happened on that day and the story behind that image. Okay. Uh, so I made that last year. Uh, it was uh, yet another pilgrimage uh, trip to uh, Bharatpur. Uh, so uh, one of those days, uh, I was going on a walk and, and, and I saw uh, uh, the monitor lizard uh, on a tree and uh, these parakeets were making a lot of noise. Uh, the suddenly I saw one parakeet uh, coming and biting the, the tail of the, the lizard. I mean, I was uh, really taken aback. And uh, I decided to stay in that place for whatever the number of days. Okay. So, uh, normally when I go to uh, Bharatpur, I uh, walk around and move around and, and see so what, what is there. Uh, especially, uh, I love to photograph uh, Saru screens and, and uh, uh, I've been going uh, there to shoot uh, the birds, arrow screens and, and uh, the other bird life. But uh, the last year when I saw this, okay, I, I thought I'll, I'll be here only and, and, and uh, next three days I stayed there. And it wasn't happening uh, uh, very frequently. Once in a while uh, these uh, butterflies, sorry, uh, these parakeets uh, used to come. Uh, and, and it used to attack and, and that attacks used to last only uh, a couple of seconds uh, uh, and, and uh, this monitor lizard used to get inside the, the nest hole. Um, so all uh, I had was uh, a couple of seconds uh, whenever uh, they come in and attack it. So uh, the first day actually, uh, uh, you know, I mean, um, we do a lot of uh, uh, experiments with our uh, images, right? So first day, what I did is, is uh, I was trying to uh, make some images with uh, very very slow shutter speeds. Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of images on, on the first day. Then I went back to a uh, room and, and saw all uh, uh, were uh, trash for the. So uh, so next day I don't wanted to lose the, uh, the another opportunity or another day. So I decided. Uh, I'll be careful this time. So uh, I decided to use. Uh, uh, fortunately, I had my 200 mm lens, uh, which I had just then uh, bought, uh, and a most amazing uh, 200 mm f2 lens. Mm -hmm. So I thought uh, uh, this is the lens for the uh, for that uh, uh, that place, and and uh, it was giving me uh, macro like details uh, mm -hmm. on one side. Another side, uh, uh, extremely uh, the fast lens, and uh, it was a joy to use. So uh, just before uh, making that image, uh, a friend of mine asked, "What is the use of uh, this lens, uh, the F, uh, uh, 200mm f2?" So then, uh, after uh, making that image, I showed that image and then told him, "Okay, this is the use." <laughs> so. Uh, it was nice and, and, and I really uh, liked uh, uh, <coughs> photographing there and, and I was there for about uh, I think two three days. Um, after that fourth day onwards uh, uh, it never showed up. 
so Morant lizard essentially was there, but uh, these parakeets stopped attacking. Uh, in nature, uh, you don't know when you when the opportunity ends, and uh, that's all. Uh, and and uh, I never saw that. Uh, though I was there for uh, eight days, uh, after uh, third or fourth day, I, I didn't see them uh, attacking again. Um, fortunately, I got some some keepers. Uh, though I I might have made about two hundred three hundred images. Uh, I got a, a good uh, uh, sequence there. Right. It was fun shooting okay. the images. Um, it is a, a kind of a, a natural history image. I mean, with a little bit of um, interesting background there. I mean, I kind of liked uh, uh, the white background. Normally, uh, uh, the traditionally people who go with the formulas think white background is, is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, I strongly differ with those opinions, and and, and uh, I really loved. Uh, Making that image. I'm pretty sure there were there were a lot of questions uh, regarding that white background also during your stay in London. Uh, yeah, actually there were a lot of uh, the people. Uh, they were uh, skeptic. Actually, uh, I was surprised in one of the uh, uh, the social media site. Um, I saw a a, a, a comment saying uh, uh, it was heavily photoshopped. Okay. Um, so. Uh, I kind of felt sad, so but then I, I also kind of felt happy because uh, uh, that is what is there in the raw file, so uh, mm -hmm. very close to that. So I I also happened to be the member of that particular uh, the social media group and, and, and I offered to uh, send them a raw file those for those uh, who doubt the uh, uh, the is. digital ethics of, uh, of, of that image. Uh, so. I left a note and, and uh, uh, obviously no one came back and asking for that uh, <laughs> that that raw file. Um, so uh, it's interesting because uh, so a lot of people think that uh, it is impossible to get uh, that kind of a, mm -hmm. a background with uh, the parakeet clearly exposed. Uh, okay. Anyway, so that is interesting. <laughs> but at any point, did you feel that? You should have tried to submit this image in probably any other categories, probably even mammals or creative. And why specifically you went for uh, birds as such? Um, I kind of felt that it, it actually uh, uh, fitted that uh, theme uh, uh, better than uh, probably the, the reptiles or whatever it is. So, uh, uh, and here the the main attraction or the main subject being bird, I I felt uh, uh, the bird category was, was more appropriate. Okay. So if you had to define the word creativity or creativity in nature photography, mm -hmm. how would you put it together? Creativity is, is obviously okay. So you create something which doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So in view of whatever I said uh, <coughs> about the creation of the life, mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, that is when uh, I have uh, 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 probably I'll be contradicting uh, my own very purpose uh, uh, because uh, 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 yeah there is a an amount of creation but I think uh, uh, there is a, a a creation that happens in nature mm -hmm. which uh, uh, I'm clueless about mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, makes me very uh, wondering about uh, all these things. Okay. So when, when you're talking about creativity, you just mentioned about like seeing things differently and trying to explore new ways of showing things. Mm -hmm. So in an attempt to do that, we have explored quite a lot of things over the years, uh, be it things like infrared photography, camera traps, or mm -hmm. aerial photography, so many things. Mm -hmm. And even the techniques of post-processing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. By doing all these things, like. At this point of time, do you anytime feel that we have hit a roadblock wherein there is nothing new that is being seen or like at any point you feel that we are not seeing something new? Has it crossed your mind like that? Yeah, I think probably you are right. I mean, uh, um, in the last probably 7-8 years, I mean, we have 
kind of tried all kinds of techniques yeah. of, of, of uh, doing uh, nature photography. Uh, as you said, uh, we explored camera traps, we explored uh, the photo traps or, or, or the different kinds of bat images or, or uh, the infrared triggers and now we have all kinds of drones and everything. I mean, um, if I look at an image, I mean, do I see uh, it's very fresh? Uh, may not be. But I still think there are a lot of such fresh perspectives which had to be made. Okay. Um, I'm sure they will come. Okay. Now just licking this point, I want to make a very bold statement uh, here, which is like, do you think creativity is a burden? Because in an attempt to create something new, mm. are we sort of imposing sort of a restriction on ourselves on how we see the world outside? Uh, See, first of all, uh, if we think it is a burden, I mean, whatever we produce will never be creative. Exactly. Again, we have to be enjoying whatever uh, we do, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, I think, uh, um, fortunately for me, mm -hmm. um, I only need to satisfy myself mm -hmm. and I, I really don't need to satisfy you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I make images for myself. So. Uh, so, uh, if I am happy, mm. so then I uh, am happy and then, uh, so it is not a burden which someone has uh, enforced on me, I mean, right? So it is a burden, if we, if we call it as a burden, I, I don't think it is a burden for me. Okay. Because I, so see sometimes it is frustrating because I mean I create uh, an image and, and, and uh, I have something in mind, it doesn't come most of the time mm -hmm. the way I want it. So then, yeah, it, it frustrates. Yeah. But uh, uh, but it is not a burden. I mean, I'm not under pressure. Yeah. The reason why I put in that uh, question, mm -hmm. you use the word pressure. Mm -hmm. So when you go out, okay, uh, like I know you're out in the field, but there are people who know that okay, Danish is out on a specific trip. Okay, mm -hmm. I can expect some new images. Mm -hmm. So do you always have that pressure that okay, if I make an image, I put it up on social media or if I put it up on my website. How will people perceive this? Do you ever get a thought when you are out in the field? Uh, no, actually, I mean, uh, probably there was a time when I was uh, uh, having some of these things, but half late, no. I mean, uh, if, if you look at, so okay, of course, I do share it on uh, the Facebook and my uh, the, uh, the websites and all. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if you look at, uh, see, the, the number of likes, whatever those gets are, are uh, very, very less compared to uh, uh, probably a bird on a, a stick kind of images. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but but actually, I mean, I I feel happy, and that's why I post it. I okay. mean, uh, not that uh, that <coughs> need to uh, appeal to someone else. Okay. So, we'll just step back and go to the uh, wildlife photographer of the year contest, and you had a chance to see all the images up close and personal and interact with the, the photographers. Mm -hmm. So when I personally look at those images mm -hmm. and I go through each of the galleries, one thing that struck me is quite a lot of images mm -hmm. uh, have a very uh, a story behind those images which you can, which is very evident mm -hmm. when you look at those images. When, when I look at your specific image, I know there is some chaos that going on, there is some confrontation. So how difficult is it to convey a story but still keep an image creative? Do you think it's it's a very uh, easy process, or do you think it's it's very challenging to bring in an aspect of storytelling and creativity? I think both go together. I mean, if I have to uh, say, story is one of the part of the uh, uh, creative image making. If there is a, if as a photographer, if I know the story, okay. Suppose, say for example, if I know that okay, this. Uh, uh, bird probably has this behavior mm -hmm. uh, exhibited and that is a natural history part of it, right? So, uh, or on any other subject, I'm just taking an example. So then I can think about uh, different ways of composition or different ways of uh, uh, showing that same thing. So uh, the story and, and image making has to go together. Mm -hmm. So a creativity cannot exist without some of this, the knowledge. Okay. So, uh, so the otherwise then I will be uh, uh, doing images. Uh, I mean that may not that may may be very difficult. Okay. 
But having said that, and there, there are uh, uh, in the past we also took approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, so in what I myself call uh, the fine art nature photography, there um, uh, lots of times um, natural history was not the focus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but what was uh, uh, so we were, we were basically trying to use those forms and and uh, see the shapes and the colors in the nature mm -hmm. to uh, say something about our own emotions, our own feelings. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a different uh, the part of it. So uh, that is, uh, I'm not talking about the story of, of that particular species or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm using some uh, forms and shapes in, in, the, uh, in the nature, mm -hmm. but, but I'm, I'm saying something different. So, okay. so a nature in my, say for example, an elephant in my image need not be an elephant. Mm -hmm. It may be something else, I mean, uh, it may be me. I mean, uh, so basically, uh, uh, I often tend to use the subjects in nature two ways. Okay. So sometimes I may use it as a natural history and then sometimes I may be using it as a, a, a philosophical, uh, uh, to say something philosophically or something mm -hmm. very abstractly. So okay. uh, not every image of nature in mm -hmm. my uh, the portfolio is a natural history image. Okay. So having said that, uh, how important uh, for you is having a signature style? And uh, there was a time when having a signature style was important. Mm -hmm. But having a signature style continuously, that means that you are not being creative. Mm -hmm. So what is your thoughts on it, on having a signature style? Whatever yeah. See, some, some, some time ago when I was <coughs> just thinking I need to have, as I said, I need to have my signature and, and uh, images, uh, if someone sees that image and then they should think that okay, it is my image. Uh, I think about last two, three years or probably maybe a little more, uh, uh, I strongly think otherwise now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to have uh, signatures. I mean, uh, for a uh, uh, couple of reasons. The one reason is, is uh, so when we say something is, is a signature, so signature means so signature doesn't change, yeah. right? So uh, that is what signature is all about. So uh, that means all my images will look very similar, repetitive. So, uh, repetitive. so uh, uh, that is one reason uh, uh, I don't want signature. And the other reason is is, is more important. Uh, the signature means okay, it is about me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want. Uh, sometimes I wonder, okay, whether his, his subject is more important or me more important in the image. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, I don't think uh, um, uh, I am more important than the subject. Mm -hmm. So, that is another reason I, I really don't want to uh, have uh, or, or uh, I stopped worrying about signatures in my image. Uh, and lastly, as I said, I mean now that topic is not at all in my mind because mm -hmm. uh, now I know um, I'm just as I said I'm just wondering and, and I know how small I am in front of this nature. Now, a um, lot of people who like uh, who follow your work, including me. So when we have something new to look forward to, when we want to get motivated, we look forward to your work. So when it has to come to you. What is that inspires you or what is that thing you look forward to, to inspire, to create new images? Um, I think off late, uh, uh, see the very, the making images is, is probably is slowly going away as is the purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, that is becoming a, a kind of a, a, a secondary thing. Yeah, and of course I will, I will still be doing lots of images mm -hmm. in, for the years to come. But uh, uh, more than images, uh, uh, as I said, now I'm, uh, I just wonder about nature. Mm -hmm. So why, why is it this way? I mean, how, how, how is it this way? I mean, so I'm more fascinated by that mm -hmm. uh, and when I'm thinking about all those things, uh, 
uh, I tried to do some some images. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, okay. I mean, if I see some uh, very interesting natural history moment or some something, I will still continue to do uh, whatever I have been doing. Mm -hmm. But but my my main uh, the focus now is is, is uh, just wondering about it. So for a lot of folks who don't know, uh, music has played a significant role when you try to put your images and your thought process. And all. So how do you define that your relationship with photography and music? So those musics are, are, are very, some of those are very close to me and, and I try to uh, uh, see what exactly in that music. See music is, is another form of art just like photography, right? So, uh, so if you, uh, then okay, so there are certain parallels that we can draw. Uh, in, in say, for example, in photography, so we have uh, the forms and shapes and then colors and all those things. And similarly, in music, we have uh, the ragas and then compositions and all those things. We have compositions here too. Mm -hmm. So I always try to draw parallels between uh, so this ragas and and and, and then uh, the how do we uh, uh, basically uh, uh, stitch. The elements of of uh, the uh, of of uh, uh, our media. When I say an elements, uh, it may be forms, shapes, colors, or whatever it is. And then how can I compose those things? And then how can uh, basically how the musicians compose mm -hmm. different notes into ragas? Okay. And then I'm, I'm just trying to uh, draw some parallels and then see what makes a raga a, a, a sad raga or a, a, a happy raga. How can I make an image, a sad image or an happy image? So I always try to draw some parallels uh, between these uh, two different forms of art. And uh, it's quite interesting and uh, uh, I love doing some of those things. Uh, you have someone uh, who is from engineering background and you were in defense field, uh, did some research work. If I'm yeah. right for a couple of years in your early part of the yeah, about five years. Yes. Five years. And uh, you moved into IT, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you you're still in IT, and you it's it's sort of like a bread and butter. But how did photography get into you, and how did the whole aspect of nature photography aspect to you? Uh, basically, this love for this forest, nature, mm -hmm. uh, came from uh, the childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, actually, uh, I mean, of course, uh, we, I couldn't afford a, a camera till. Uh, I started working, so then I bought a small uh, camera and then I wanted to go again back to the, the Western Ghats. Mm -hmm. So to do a landscape or whatever that uh, the photography, because uh, this nature was always uh, uh, very inspiring. So mm -hmm. that is how this whole nature photography started. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then I got into that vicious circle of buying equipment, software, equipment, software, equipment. Yeah. So then, uh, it is. I'm still buying equipment. <laughs> you probably started off with a 600 mm. Off late, I think you are more happy with a 12 mm ultra wide lens. So why this a uh, different path when it comes to equipments and the way you choose your uh, lenses or uh, cameras? Yeah, actually, I mean, I uh, it is see, it's, like a, it's like a spiral. It is not a circle. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I started with uh, say 28 105mm lens and then uh, I added uh, 7300 and then bought 300 f4 and then finally I, I bought 600 f4 mm -hmm. and all those things. I mean I enjoyed doing all those uh, the bird on stick kind of images for long mm -hmm. and then uh, again I uh, kind of felt that it's all boring so uh, I came back to uh, uh, the 11 mm, yeah. from from 600 to 11 mm. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, so, but I did not come back to the same point. That's why I'm saying it is a spiral. It is not a circle, right? So uh, when I came back to 11 mm, the purpose was was different. It was not what I started with. Mm -hmm. So I'm I probably was using a, a different, I mean, similar wide angle the length, uh, the, the lens, but. Uh, the, when I came back to 11 mm or the wide, wide angle, uh, the purpose was uh, different. I mean, I was interested in, say, wide angle macro photography. Mm -hmm. I, I was interested in wide angle 
camera track images. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted uh, to do some infrared triggered images. Mm-hmm. So that is when I came back to uh, say 24 mm. So then I again go went up to say some 200 mm and then. Mm-hmm. So then I, now I'm shuttling around uh, <laughs> so around say 35 mm to 85 mm in, in, that, in that range, uh, trying to do something. So, I just talked about uh, creativity and uh, you spoke about photography. You are someone who has spent quite a considerable amount of time, even in fine art printing, mm-hmm. uh, be it different media or be it experimenting with the images and the media. Mm-hmm. So, what, what has been your like experience in the whole thing? Because it, it, not many people in our part of the, mm-hmm. um, the world spend so much of time on fine art printing, but you have spent quite a bit of uh, your time and money on it. So what has, how has been your experience in the printing field? It's an amazing experience. Uh, see, when uh, it is, say, when, when people uh, look at some image on the web mm-hmm. and they comment it, okay, I don't know why this jury has selected this image mm-hmm. and I don't understand what is in it and those kind of stuff. See, certain images have to be seen as, as a big print or, or as a very big. Mm-hmm. Say, for example, when I was in London, uh, so they had uh, amazing display of the backlit display of all the images of, say, uh, 20 by uh, 30 size. Mm-hmm. The huge displays. I mean, if, if you stand in front of that image, uh, you really uh, uh, get a, a, a such a joy, I mean, which probably you will not see in a a small uh, the size of say say thousand pixels on a website mm-hmm. or maybe even in a small book mm-hmm. of say some eight by ten uh, the kind of prints mm-hmm. uh, and uh, uh, see printing is is totally a different beast mm-hmm. right so uh, so when you get uh, uh, expertise in your post processing so you get an ex- you become an expert mm-hmm. after processing hundred thousand images. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so that, that is when you really become an expert in, in, in uh, the post-processing. Then you, then you will understand mm-hmm. what, where do you want to place uh, basically the, your the tonal ranges or, or the, the, how do you want to manipulate your uh, uh, the colors and contrast and, and, and brightness and, and all those things. I mean it is a uh, very conscious decision uh, and whatever we do uh, on, on the screen is totally useless mm-hmm. when it comes to the printing. Mm-hmm. And suppose you want to make a large, uh, say, 20 by 30 image, uh, the print. Uh, so these two, uh, and it's a, a, it's totally a different skill set. The okay. printing is totally a different skill set. Mm-hmm. It is not like post-processing image and, and, and then uh, pressing the print by button on, on this one. <coughs> so right. So there is a lot of uh, uh, the expertise that is needed. I wanted to learn that thing, so I spent a lot of time and a and, and lot of money on all these fine art papers and those papers are horribly expensive. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I, I wasted lots of money on, on uh, buying varieties of different kinds of uh, the papers and a lot of, say for example, uh, anime or media or some other uh, media. So, uh, it was a, a very, very uh, good experience. Uh, mm-hmm of seeing something on the screen and, and, and trying to uh, produce a matching uh, uh, print okay. on, on a, a media of our choice and, and every paper has got its own uh, uh, the different characteristics so mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and some papers match with some kinds of images mm-hmm. some papers doesn't match with some kinds of images and you you wouldn't know actually mm-hmm. so what paper is, is good for what image mm-hmm. so there are there can be some direct general guidelines mm-hmm. but uh, there's a lot of joy in, in, in experimenting and and and, uh, uh, and and when you have a, a large print, say 20 by 30 print, which you really like it, and the joy of seeing that as a frame print is, is totally different than joy of looking at say 1200 by uh, say 600 pixels image on the on the screen. screen. So that is a that's been a very uh, great experience. So, I haven't uh, spoken about creativity and uh, photography. Uh, one thing that uh, goes hand in hand with Ganesh is CNP, uh, it's Creative Nature Photography Forum. 
Okay, so what's like for the people who are listening to you, what's happening there and what next? What is your vision for the next uh, few years um, that's running in your mind for the core? Okay, so um, honestly, I think uh, uh, you are part of uh, the, the CNPS. Yeah, as I, I as wanted to answer that question. So as I much as uh, I am, um, and uh, we have uh, our friends, uh, part of the forum, VMR, uh, Pravin Shankar, Pramod, Ashwin. Uh, we all of us uh, uh, made that uh, long ago. Uh, if I have to name uh, uh, one success of mine as, as a, a photographer or uh, something which gave me a lot of satisfaction uh, in my photography is, is uh, uh, doing that uh, uh, that forum. I mean, uh, every day I'm, I'm kind of uh, surprised uh, uh, by the amount of uh, novel ideas which people come out with and, and, and then share their visions. Uh, uh, it is simply amazing. I mean, uh, so what I really feel very happy about it is, is, is uh, we have created a platform uh, where the people can fearlessly post. See, the uh, so I think that is, see, that was in the the cornerstone or constitution of, of CNP. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were time when I mean all those images cannot be posted in other forums, right? Some people think, hey, what is this? This nonsense, mm -hmm. right? So we did not do that, mm -hmm. and then we encouraged those things. See, if if I if I am fearless, then only I can do a, a creative work. Yes. If I am if I am worried about what the rest of the world thinks, I will never be able to make something very, very unique, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so actually, uh, so that is actually is, is a great thing in this forum. So mm -hmm. we we encourage every kinds of experimentation. Mm -hmm. So world may think it is meaningless. So so be it. But uh, it is see so some in in some cases it. No one probably may, may, may like that. It is fine. Mm -hmm. But I think we should not be hindering uh, the creativity of, of anyone. So that, that is the, the basic philosophy of, of uh, uh, or our basic strength of, of, of this forum. Yeah. And that actually has produced some of the very, very uh, uh, unique, interesting uh, visions and, and uh, very uh, the capable photographers. Yes. Uh, going Away from nature and photography, we have been observing Ganesh doing quite a bit of non-nature work which is probably I can say like street photography or people photography. Why the sudden shift in uh, your genre? Uh, see, if, if for the last several years, part of my images are, uh, uh, are only symbolic. The subjects in nature were only symbolic. See, for example, I, I, was, I may be using a, a, a twig or, or maybe a, a, a bent grass. So I really meant people there. I mean, I did not mean a, a grass, <laughs> right? So uh, now I'm using the people, people themselves. <laughs> so so uh, um, uh, but that way, actually, the nature had a, a nature photography has one uh, a big strength when I want to use nature for a non-nature uh, portraits, right? So the, the interesting thing is that abstraction is, is inbuilt into that. Yeah. So for example, uh, if I show a man, then it is a man, right? Uh, but if I portray a, 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 a bent grass as, as a human, mm -hmm. so then, then the abstraction is already there. And I don't need to say that, so that it is abstract. So, say for example, if you want to do an abstract mm -hmm. uh, photography using human subjects, it becomes becomes tough because suddenly you will relate that to a human. Mm -hmm. So, but if I create a human forms using subjects in nature, mm -hmm. the abstraction is, is built there only. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there is an advantage of using nature in abstract way mm -hmm. to do a kind of a non-nature photography. 
so uh, so with that background i think uh, so doing uh, so this is kind of a natural uh, progression of that for me uh, of late i also think that there is only for me at least and there is only one kind of photography it is nature photography okay. so uh, the nature photography uh, for me as i said that I mean, and now i just wonder about everything mm-hmm. so wonder about life wonder about uh, the creation wonder about uh, uh, forces behind this universe mm-hmm. and and everything is, is 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 nature so and human beings are part of that okay so uh, speaking about it like any specific body of work that you are currently working on or any portfolio that is keeping you busy right now uh i really uh, don't have any uh, um, very defined well defined project so i just came back uh, making some images of some elephants and then in the city in the city and then the tiger sun city so uh, i do whatever i feel like to do okay. so uh, that sort of leads me to the last important question which is like if you were to advise a youngster or people who are getting new into nature photography So, what is that one important piece of advice that you would like to give him or her to get started? Okay, one means it is difficult. Or they can probably, do it. Yeah, you can add <laughs> it. Uh, so, one thing I think probably um, important is is uh, basically. Uh, having okay so after some time after learning all this basics and everything right um one need to go with uh, their intuition um so today unfortunately uh, people really worry about how many likes they get on their uh, facebook or instagram profile and uh, start changing their philosophy mm-hmm. based on those things i mean i think uh, that is very uh, that will definitely hurt i think uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, go with our own uh, uh, so what we think mm-hmm. and then try to uh, explore uh, uh, those things i think uh, so that is what probably uh, is the one thing which i would like to share with the uh, uh, budding photographers So thanks a lot Ganesh thanks a lot for spending time with us and sharing your experiences and your thought process behind your images and photography thank you very much thank you